they want to believe that the forebears had it all messed up. And their generation is the one that's got to straighten it out. That, that's always the conflict between generations. One generation feels like they have all the wisdom, so the new generation needs to sit down and learn something. Amen. 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 And the new generation feels like they've come into some new enlightenment, and the other generation needs to just retire and leave them alone. Amen. And if we could ever bring the two together and realize both generations have something valuable to contribute, then we could get farther ahead. And so the writer writes to the Hebrews, and he's addressing in chapter 4, God's rest. Amen. Now if you forget the struggle, you won't appreciate the promise of rest. If you forget that you've been through something, you will neglect the value of rest. You see, when you've been working hard all day, you look forward to a good night's sleep. Amen. But if you ain't been doing nothing all day, then you don't, you don't appreciate the opportunity to rest. There's some people who say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to sit down. That don't sound good to some folk because they've been sitting here. <laughs> But when you've been laboring, you look forward to rest. And so in the text, the writer addresses Hebrews who have been through struggle and known labor, and that he talks about God's rest. But not only is it valuable to remember that these are Hebrews because of that reason, but it's also important to recognize and remember that these are Hebrews because in this book, he, the entire book, he is talking about the superiority of Jesus Christ. Amen. He literally takes what is commonplace to them and says to them, yes, God sanctioned that, but in these days, Amen. chapter 1, verse 1, he says, God who had sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past, unto the fathers by the prophets. So hold in high regard the prophets because God did use them. Hold them in high regard because your ancestors did hear from God through them. But verse 2 he says, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. So he's saying to the Hebrews, remember your history, appreciate your history, but along with your reverence for your history, you need to recognize what God is doing in modern times. I say to you, same thing he's saying to them. God spoke through our foreparents and spoke to our foreparents, but don't neglect what God is doing today. God is still speaking through his son. God is still speaking through Jesus Christ. Don't ever let Satan think Make you think that our foreparents had an advantage that we don't have. This is what these modern day Hebrews were thinking is they had all these advantages and still didn't get it. The writer says in Hebrews 4, you need to be afraid lest you miss out on a promise because failure is possible for you too. You can miss it too. So don't come down so hard on those who came before you because you can make the same error they made. Speaking to the Hebrews about the superiority of Jesus Christ in chapter 1, he talks about his superiority over the angels and he goes through that and he talks throughout this whole thing how he is, he is greater than your high priest for he is the great high priest. And the new covenant is superior over the old covenant. He's superior over all that you have heard about. God has used it in the past but in these last days, he's using his son. Amen. So when you come to church on Sundays and you hear a message from the Lord, rejoice. But don't just rejoice, be afraid. Because if you're not afraid, you might take it for granted. And 
when you take it for granted, you can miss it just like our ancestors did. Yeah. I said in my Sunday school class this morning, and it came right off the press, that when you hear truth yeah. that is different than what you have previously believed, yeah. there are four steps you ought to take. Yeah. Number one, you need to acknowledge that it is different. Yeah. Help me if you can. Because if you don't acknowledge that it's different, you'll just pretend like that's what you've been doing. But then, after you acknowledge that it's different, you need to agree that it does make good sense. And when you agree that it makes good sense, you ought to ask God to make it a permanent part of your spirit. And then once you ask God to make it a permanent part of your spirit, fourthly, you need to apply it as soon as possible. So since God in these last days is speaking through his son, if you've been running to the methods he used in the past and ignoring the method he's using in the present, you need to acknowledge, number one, that what you just heard is different. Acknowledge, number two, that it, is, that, that it does make good sense. You need to ask the Lord to make it a permanent part of your spirit. And our forebears would say, when you know better, you ought to do better. Children of Israel missed out yeah. on God's rest. Amen. And the text tells us in more than one instance why they missed out. Verse 6 makes it very clear that it was preached, but they entered not in because of unbelief. Now understand, unbelief is deeper than the way many of us perceive it. Many of us think unbelief is only, I don't know if that's true. No, unbelief is to turn your heart from. To believe is to totally rely on. Unbelief is to turn your heart from. So a person who believes on Jesus Christ totally relies on Jesus Christ. But unbelief is when a person turns their heart from Christ. And you can do that in church. You can quote a Bible and talk a Bible and still not believe on Jesus Christ. Y'all having witnesses here. You can be in the church and not have the church in you because you recognize church lingo. You know how to say amen, when to say hallelujah. You know the lyrics to all the hymns in the hymn book. But the reality is, when it's time for you to make a decision, Jesus is only a spare time. There were consequences to unbelief of the message from God's servant. When Moses spoke and Israel turned from God, there were consequences. And the text is saying, how much more are there consequences if you ignore Jesus? Oh, I hope y'all hearing me today. That if there were consequences when they didn't listen to Moses, if there were consequences when they turned their heart from God, when Moses spoke to them, and now in these last days, he's speaking through his son, you know that there are consequences when you disobey Moses' words, there are definitely going to be consequences when you disobey Jesus' word. Jesus, the apostle, that word apostle, once sent forth from God, who is also the great high priest. Amen. Amen. He is the one authorized to go to God for us. Amen. No earthly priest. Come on now. Jesus. Yeah. No prayer committee. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is the one authorized to be our great high priest. Amen. The sin is always unbelief. Amen. 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 Now again, that's hard for us to grasp because we're so inundated with law. And the reason why many of us are so inundated with law is because we won't, we're too lazy to nurture a relationship with Jesus. <laughs> You ain't taking enough time and 
prayer and meditation. So you need law to keep you straight because you don't have a relationship with prayer. You need rules when you don't have a relationship. You need duties when you don't have devotion. You need a law when you don't have love. And so the reason why so many people need to be fussed at and preached at in order to look righteous is because you are nurturing a relationship with God and if folk ain't fussing at you, condemning you, and criticizing you, you just gonna run wild. But, 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 but you ought to hear Jesus coming to the garden alone. Yes, While the dew is still on the roses, yes. and the voice you hear calling on your ear, the Son of God discloses. He walks with me. Yes, he talks with man. He tells me that I am his own. Someone wanted to challenge me the other day and said that Jesus didn't hoop, so preachers ought not be hooping. I said, Well, Jesus didn't use microphones either. Right and wrong is not always clear based on scripture, but if you have a relationship with him, he will show you what right and wrong is, and it would never be inconsistent with the scripture. Sin is always unbelief. Faith has always been God's measuring stick. Hebrews 11 and 2 says that by faith, the elders obtained a good report. So this writer says, fear, that is, don't take it lightly. Amen. Don't be presumptuous. Yeah. Don't think you automatically have it straightened out. Amen. 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 Fear, verse 1, because, number 2, failure is possible. Amen. You, too, may fall short of God's rest. Amen. Now, verse 2 says, because good news was also preached to us, they didn't believe, so preaching didn't profit them. Yeah, that's the word. Preaching don't help you if you don't believe. That's why I gave you those four steps. Because most people will hear preaching. And memorize as much of it as they like. Yeah. I say as they like. Yeah. And then they go to the beauty shop or the barber shop or to their job and they start quoting stuff to fool folk like they really fire baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost because they know the word. It's making no difference in their life. The only thing it changes is the conversation a little. Preaching doesn't help you if you don't believe it. Faith is the requirement in order to obtain rest. The writer alludes to the types of rest that he's, that God has provided. Verses 4 through and 5, he talks about rest and creation. It was given to them, and they messed that up. That's, that's, that's one of the dangers of being blessed. Yeah. If you are blessed when you're not ready, yeah. you're going to mess the blessing up. Yeah. The movie uh, A Bronx Tale. There's man, these are Italian uh, Italians, and the man who was kind of the game leader in the whole community the young boy admired him and respected him. And so the gang leader kind of took him as a mentee and he was teaching him the ropes. And when the boy got ready to go on his first date, he said to him, he said, uh, he gave him some notes as to why you can tell if she's one of the great ones. He said, because every man is entitled to three great women in his lifetime. <laughs> And the teenager said to him, well, what about you? You never married. He said, I met all three of mine before I was 14. <laughs> if you're not ready for the blessing, you will mess the blessing up. 
And so they weren't ready to be blessed, so they ruined it. How many of you, if you're not ashamed to be honest, can look back over your life and see blessings that you ruined? It's not that God had blessed you, you just weren't ready to be blessed. And the reason why in many instances you weren't ready to be blessed is because you were aware God was speaking to you, but you didn't believe. And so since you didn't believe, you weren't ready for the blessing when it came. Six days God labored, yeah. and on the seventh day he rested. The Jewish Sabbath, contrasted from the Christian Sabbath, was for them a day of rest. Our Christian Sabbath is on the first day of the week. It's a day of worship. Amen. I think I put a footnote right there. Don't come down hard on them for messing up their seventh day rest if you ain't honoring your first day. Help me if you can. Don't, don't, don't be skipping church when it's convenient and coming to church as if church is an option. The first day of the week, the saints should be in the house of the Lord. On our Christian Sabbath, the first day of the week, we are celebrating the day that our Savior rose. He rose on Sunday morning. Amen. You know how we have our CME Christians? Yeah. CME yeah. Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. Yeah. They show up on Easter to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, but every Sunday, yeah. we ought to be here to celebrate that He got up yeah. on that Sunday morning. And so the Jewish Sabbath was a day of rest. The Christian Sabbath is a day of worship. The Jews misused their Sabbath day. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 12 verses 1 through 8 tells how they plucked ears of corn on the Sabbath day, which means they were guilty of reaping. They wouldn't trust God. They wouldn't trust Him enough to care for them where they could take off on one day. Amen. Amen. We don't trust him. We gotta, we gotta work. Uh oh, I done come up this street and I guess I might as well stay there. How many of us don't trust him enough to not get overtime on the first day? I knew you weren't gonna say amen. I, 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 God knows my heart. And so you too busy to come to church. Because you got to work. But you find your way to the club. You make it to what you want to make it to, but on the first day, you got excuses. You, did, you, you got seven days out of the week, but your vacation day is always on a They misused their seventh day, and we're misusing our first day. Amen. What about our Christian Sabbath? They don't worship, and yet for many of us, it's optional. Amen. When Sunday starts looking like Monday to you, yeah. you're on the verge of going spiritually bankrupt. Amen. You, 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 you all look forward to coming to the house of God to be amongst the people of God to hear the word of God so collectively we can worship God. Amen. Our attendance ought not be optional. Right. For many a worship attitude is optional. You're here but it's clear you ain't here. You know how some people clock in at work and the first thing they do after they clock in is look at their watches to see how much longer they got before they get off. There are some people who do that when they get to the house of the Lord. As soon as you walk in, you start checking the time, trying to calculate what time we're going to get out. 
heart is filled with grudges and bitterness and meanness and you show up at church as if you've done God a favor. You ought to be glad I came. I could have been in my bed. You could have been in your bed where you couldn't get out. For the Christian, we should remember the Sabbath day, our Sabbath, and keep it holy. Set it apart. Make it separate. This is our day of worship. As Christians, we don't have a whole lot of holy days. The Jews had a bunch of them. But we've got the Sabbath, the first day of the week, the Lord's Supper, and if you want to throw in Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving, we can, if we use them correctly. The least we can do is honor the few we have. And they had rest at creation. That's seventh day rest. They messed that up. Then God comes back in verses 6 to 8 and gives them rest at Canaan. Joshua was giving leadership after Moses' death. The people wandered for 40 years because God will not give us resources Amen. before we're ready for them. Amen. Amen. They wandered for 40 years. Amen. That was not 40 years of experience. That was one year of experience they got 40 times. <laughs> they ain't gonna know where they was going in service. And beware lest your life becomes one big circle. You're on a merry-go-round. You, you move it up and down, round and round, but when you get off, you get off the same place you got on. Where are you spiritually today compared to where you were last year? If you're in the same spot, you just been on a merry-go-round. Where are you in your thinking today contrasted from where you were last year? If you're still thinking the same way, you just on a merry-go-round. That's one of the things that I discovered about some of my college classmates. Some of them are still talking about the same stuff they were talking about in college. Amen. Just on a merry-go-round, up and down, round and round. But getting off the same place you got on. When are we ready? We're ready when we submit to God's intent and commit to the proper usage of what he gave us. Amen, 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 amen. When you recognize what God has done and why he's done it and you yield your way to his agenda, then you're ready. Amen, amen, amen. The evil heart of Israel was not ready to embrace the rest of Canaan. Premature entrance would have defeated the purpose because the intent of the rest is you've been slaves, forced to live under Pharaoh's plan. But now I want to elevate you so that my glory might be seen through you. You've been the shame of Israel as slaves in Egypt, but I want to elevate you so that you can be my glory to the whole world. I want all the world to know me through how I bless you. I want my evangelism program to be how I bless my children. But if you're still thinking like a slave, New land ain't going to free you. <laughs> if you're still thinking like a slave, moving to the other side of town, yeah. buying a bigger house, yeah. ain't going to free you. Don't have a witness here. I ain't planning on going down this street either, but I know a whole lot of folk who will spend extra money to go get an apartment in Hoover and Vestavia, and you ask them where they live, they stick their chest out, I live in Hoover. <laughs> you still renting? Yeah. I don't care where you are, if you ain't owning it, you are still a slave. Sticking your nose up at somebody because they live in 
a center point in a house and you in Hoover in an apartment. <laughs> Joshua led them into Canaan, but through strategic errors, they were still conquered. He didn't get he didn't gain control of the borders on the west and the, Phil uh, and the Philistines and Phoenicians took it. He led them, but they didn't get control of the borders. He made a bad covenant with the Gibeonites, and in a victorious battle, he didn't destroy all the enemies as God told him to do. And all of this left opportunity for severe failures during the time of the judges. So on and on, they kept messing up. And because they kept messing up, they had opportunity, but they couldn't take advantage of it. That's us. Why do you think people keep marketing to us? It's because they know we got money. We just don't know we got it. And the reason we don't know is because as soon as we get it, we give it right back. Somebody comes in our communities, not looking like us, yeah. wanting to buy up our property. We say, oh, ain't God good. I've been wanting to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody looks like us, come in, wanting to buy up our property. Oh, he's just trying to make money out of us. He's a crook. Yeah. Because so many of us, even in 2019, we've got technological advances. We are savvy with technology, and we're just skilled slaves. Brought into our own kingdom. And won't even take advantage of it. Black man. Black chief of police. Black superintendent of schools. Most of our schools, black principals. And we still ain't getting along. Okay. New land, but still thinking like slaves. And here's what else I've learned. A college degree don't free you. You can have more degrees than a thermometer and still be crazy. I wish I had some witnesses here. Your spirit has to be free. These Hebrews weren't ready for rest and creation. They weren't ready for rest at Canaan. And if you and I aren't careful, we will hear the word preached and we will do the same things they did. Amen. 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 In verses 9 through 13, he mentions one more rest. Rest at Calvary. Jesus says on Calvary, yeah. It is finished. Amen. 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 I think we missed the weight of that. Amen. When it's finished, Amen. don't let it follow finish. <laughs> Jesus says, it is finished. I have satisfied the requirements of the Father. It is finished. Everything you needed to be declared righteous. I've done. You no longer have to sacrifice lambs. You no longer have to go to the high priest in the temple. I've met the Father's requirements. It is finished. When you're not ready for that rest, you can have the status and not the standing on. It's the equivalent of someone paying all your debts, house included. But in your mind, you still fear going broke. So you sit in the house and freeze in the winter, sweat in the summer, won't eat, hide money under your mattress, because you're saving for a rainy day. 
you in a hurricane, save it for a rainy day. You can have the status of freedom and still be standing with the mentality of a slave. Locked in a room with the door wide open. The mind is so powerful, you can have a status of rest and still in your mind, you can't rest. Jesus said, no more striving. The law, condemnation. I've finished all that. I've settled all that. If you are in me, I've already met the Father's requirement. I'm not working trying to become righteous. When I'm in Christ, he gives me his righteousness. I have the righteousness of God charged to my account. The biblical word is imputed to me. I'm righteous not because of what I do and what I don't do. I'm righteous because I believed on Christ who's done it for me. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. On the Son sets free. It's free indeed. If you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, He says it's finished. Why are you missing sleep worrying about if you're going to go to hell? <laughs> If you believed on Jesus Christ, it's finished. Amen. Once you're in his hand, he says, no man can pluck you out. Once he's finished it, it is complete. Amen. That's what Christ finished at Calvary. All of the man's, all of the demands of the law have been satisfied. Amen. The penalty was paid in full. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. My sin and your sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. You've got to be ready to embrace the rest that comes at Calvary. He paid it all. Why do you, why should you get joy coming here on Sunday morning? Because you know last Monday through Saturday, you've been celebrating that Jesus paid it off. And now you get to gather around other folk who've been celebrating too. So that when we get to church, I ain't got to work hard. If I have any work, it ought to be y'all calm down so I can bring it. Don't have any witnesses here. Because you've been rejoicing all week long. You come here with a shout on your lips. You come here with praise in your heart because you've got rest. So Jesus, keep me near the cross. For at the cross, there's a precious fountain. Free all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, till my ratchet soul shall find rest beyond the river. I'm so glad my rest is in Jesus Christ. Labor, labor, labor has already been finished out on Calvary. Jesus bore my sins. Jesus bore your sins so that in God my sin debt has been paid. Paid in full because Jesus paid it all. Is there anybody here that can help me praise the Lord because he did it for you and he did it for me. Is there anybody here that can rejoice with me that Jesus paid it all, all to him we owe. Are you glad that you can find rest? Ain't got to work to be saved. Don't have to beg to get saved. Don't have to worry if I am saved because Jesus said it's finished. I'm 
saved by his power divine. I'm saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete. Cause I'm saved, saved, I'm saved. Is there anybody here that knows that's a reason to bless the Lord at all times? Because it's finished. Is there anybody here that knows that's justification for you to rejoice every day? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So if you know what I know, if you understand what I understand, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt Him. His name together. Do you know it's finished? Do you know he's done it? Do you know it's paid in full? I don't gotta go to church. I get to go to church. I don't have to praise him. I get to praise him. Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Yeah. 
Standings with your church. You may be seated. All others, if any, please remain standing. 